Hello everyone and welcome to Mr. Simplify's tutorials. My intent is to help you understand concepts in the easiest way possible without the use of any of the associated jargon. And today we're going to look at Bloom's Taxonomy. Now, Bloom's Taxonomy is one of the ways of gauging competence in the world of learning and development. It basically consists of various levels and how well you understand a particular topic will determine what level of the taxonomy you belong. As simple as that. And what we're going to look at is the most popular version, which is the cognitive version of the taxonomy. Well, cognitive models are concerned with the art of learning or perceiving things. It's basically how people learn which defines the cognitive version of the taxonomy. Now, here we look at a diagrammatic representation of the taxonomy. As we can see, it consists of six levels. A learner would start his or her learning journey from the bottom level, which is knowledge, and proceed along until he reaches the level of evaluation, which is the highest level. As we proceed along, as we move from bottom to top, you're expected to know more about the subject of your interest and therefore become an expert until you're at the top. At the top you're at a level of expertise where you'll be able to run debates, where you'll be able to educate people and where you'll be able to hold your arguments on the topic of your interest. Let's start looking at each of the levels. Knowledge, the very basic level, is the very first level of the taxonomy and here you're only expected to do basic things like recall facts, terms and the basic concepts relating to the subject of your interest. For example, if the subject of your interest is geography, for instance, geography of the United Kingdom, then you'll be expected to know what the biggest city in the United Kingdom is. Just knowing that would enable you to be at this level of the taxonomy. The second level is comprehension, wherein you should be able to compare like terms, combine basic information and then interpret the information together. Now for instance, let's interpret a series of blocks and see what shape uh, they form once, they put the, once you put them together. As simple as that. So if you're learning about designs, this is the, the level where you'd be expected to be at. Application is the next level higher up. And here you'd be expected to be able to use the knowledge acquired in the previous levels to solve problems in new situations. As simple as that. Now for instance, if you're a student of architecture and you design stuff, you'd be expected to know the flaws in this structure, if at all there are any. That means you're applying your knowledge onto something new and you're taking it to the next level in that way. The next level is analysis. Now this is one of the more advanced stages where you would be able to break up any of the new information acquired to parts you know, into their basic components and then identify things like reasons, motives, etc. And then also find evidence to support any of your views on, your, on your, the topic of your interest. For instance, you can start a debate on why dolphins are called mammals because you're an expert in that field, you're at the level of analysis, you should be able to do that. The next level higher up is synthesis. In this advanced level, you are expected to be able to combine different types of information from different sources and then be able to form alternate solutions. For instance, if English grammar, if basic English grammar was the subject of your interest then you should be able to put these word together, words together very easily. A stitch in time saves nine for instance. And then here is the final level of the taxonomy. So basically if you are on this level of the taxonomy you are expected to be an expert of the field of your interest. For instance, you would be able to defend opinions, you would be able to hold debates, you would be able to defend your opinion based on evidence, based on your studies. For instance, why is Benjamin Franklin so famous? Others can give their views, but you would base them on 
evidence and nothing more so you are an expert in the subject you will be able to understand it and now let's look at a way of remembering it or memorizing it supposedly so let's let's assume that you're going for an interview and you think you know one of the things that they could ask you is the Bloom's taxonomy and you want to memorize it you want to remember it or you're giving an exam you know if if you want to memorize it I'm giving you an easy way of doing it now let's list all of the levels together and just mark the very first alphabet so K C A A S E. Let's take them together. K C A A S E. Now let's combine the two A's together. And what do we get? K case. Just remember that the A is superimposed with another A there. So this is a very simple way of remembering it, isn't it? K case and then you know what the various levels are. Once you go through this presentation like five times, you should be able to know what the various levels are and then you know what the abbreviation is to remember it and there you go. You can use the model to gauge learning, you can use the model to gauge competence. Well, applying the model is obviously something very advanced, something very enhanced and you should be at a, at a higher level of the taxonomy to be able to do that obviously. We are going to look at that subsequently, but this gives you a basic idea of what Bloom's taxonomy is, clears up all the doubts and makes it comes across as simple as possible. I thank you very much for your attention and watch out this space.